Worcester District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now, Mr. District Attorney, in the case of the hidden money killer. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. The usual crime is one that finds stranger playing on stranger. But occasionally, my office encounters the exception, where the criminal victimizes a friend. When this occurs, as in the case you are about to hear, the job of detection can be involved and difficult. There's your change, sir. Thank you. Hey, Carol, how about the sandwiches for me and Carstain? Wait till our customer leaves. You can forget the food for now. I want you to come downstairs and help me find that money before Pop Leonard gets back. Me too. Why not? Let's go. Watch these steps. That bulb is pretty dim. It is. like a bilge down here. Well, what do you expect, Violet? What's the deal on this, anyway? Pop's afraid of banks. He's got money buried under the floor. Under the floor? Oh, little lax. All you got to do is tear up a few bricks. Right here. What are we going to use, our fingers? Here's a big screwdriver. Okay, I just hope you're right up on this. Yeah, it sounded like you hit something there. Yeah, not yet. down there. Uh-oh. Pop, uh, go back upstairs. We're just looking for rats. Well, I didn't tell you to do that. The cats can take care of them. And who are these? What's the matter, Pop? You've been pulling up bricks. Now I know what you're doing here. And after all I've done for you, Carol. Wait a second, Pop. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to call the police. You people ain't going to steal from me. You ain't going nowhere. Do let go of me. Why, you old goat, poke me, will you? Stop! Hey, this guy's dead. All right, so he's dead. Let's find that money. You better be here. That's all I got to say. It's here. How about you working at the bricks, Cousin? No, I'll work the bricks. I get screwed up. There's another one loose. Get it, Cousin. Okay. There. Hey, you hit something. Yeah. Uh, the box, all right. Well, get it out. Here she comes. Let's get it open. It's got a lock on it. Now pry it loose. Hand me the screwdriver. Here. Hey. Would you look at that? You were right all the time, baby. Now listen to me, you guys. We got we got to do this right. We're going upstairs, and you're going to tie me up and make it look real. Got a rope? Of course I got a rope. Uh, now come on. Chief, I've been waiting for you. Now, what do you think of this? Five blocks from the office. No, what is it, Harrington? Miss Miller wasn't too sure. Robbery and murder. The old man who ran the place, name of Pop Leonard. The body still here? No, the coroner's boys picked it up about ten minutes ago. But this young lady can tell you what happened. Carol Thorson, Chief. Uh, this is the district attorney, Miss Thorson. Mr. Garrett. I guess I gotta go through it all again, huh? You work here, Miss Thorson? That's right. 
I was right here behind the counter when they came in. And Pop was over there by the cellar door. How many were there? There's three of them. And they were tough. Real tough. They tied her up, Chief. Then took the old man down the cellar where he had some money hidden. The girl says they forced him to tell them where it was. And, and then they killed him. Well, what did they look like, mister? Oh, just ordinary guys. One of them was about 40. But they were tough. Real tough. Were they familiar with your boss? Did they call him Pop? Uh, I'm not sure. They, they might have called him Pop. How about his family? Pop? Oh, he didn't have any. None that I knew of, anyway. Well, is there anything else you can tell us? Well, that's about all. They came in here. One of them held a gun on me while they robbed Pop and killed him. And then they tied me up and left. Oh, thank you, Miss Thornton. Let's have a look down the cellar, Harrington. Uh, sure, Chief. Over here. Now, when we leave here, I'd like you to get a rundown on the old man's background. Find out who his friends were. If any of them answered the descriptions of the crooks that did this. Okay, Chief. This is where he had the money buried. Yep, this is it. And I want you to take a look at this bill I found on the floor. Then I'll, uh, I'll get the flashlight on it. Yeah? Hmm. Cooks must have dropped it when they left. Yeah. But get a load of that greenish stain around the edge. Yeah, I noticed it. Now, if the others are like this one... They probably will be, Harrington. That's mold. Mold? It always happens to money when you bury it or leave it in a damp place. This just got started. Bills can be completely destroyed by mold. Well, anyway, I figured it for a lead. It is. A good one. We'll instruct every bank in the area to notify us if anything like this comes in. Let's go. Well, which is your place, Carol? Coming right up. Next to the vacant lot. Okay. Get in there and throw on some glad rags. Then we'll make the round. Munger ain't gonna like this costume. After all, I'm his girlfriend. Well, Munger just happened to see you first, that's all. You want to go out with me, don't you? Could be. Sure you do. You and me were meant for each other, baby. Now get in there and doll up. I'll wait for you. I'll be out in ten minutes. I'm doing here. I came to see you. But you weren't coming till eight. So I dropped in a little early. Gave me a chance to talk to this lady who's been waiting. And just who is this lady? I'm Captain Ames, Miss Austin. I'm an attorney with the firm of Peters and Wentworth. Yeah? And what do you want with me? My firm took care of Mr. Leonard's affairs. Pop Leonard had a lawyer? That's right. We're the executors of his will. Mr. Leonard had no family, no relatives. I'm here to tell you that he left you his cafe, Miss Dawson. If you'll come into our offices tomorrow, we can talk about operating the cafe until the world's probated. Congratulations, Miss Dawson. And now, Mr. Nalog. Well, what do you got to say? Well, I can't believe it. The old man leaving me is good. I, I can't believe it. I'm sorry, baby, but I can't buy that. You can't buy what? You knew all the time the old boy was leaving you the place. He told you about it. <laughs> I didn't know a thing about don't it. Don't give me that. You made a patsy out of me, kid. But you're not going to get away with it. I'm cutting in on the business. You're cutting in on nothing. Just a minute. Hey, what's holding me up? I thought that... Oh. Here. Yeah, I'm here. What's the matter? You two having a beef? Listen to this, Costine. A lawyer was just here. 
with the news that old Pop Leonard made a will leaving me the cafe. You're kidding. No, this is the real word. And now Munger is trying to say that I knew about the will all the time. He's trying to say I angled you guys into the deal so you'd kill the old man for me. You're crazy, Munger. How'd she know I was going to knock him off? Why don't you keep your face out of this? Now, what are you doing here anyway? I'm here because I'm here. You're here because you're trying to beat my time with Carol. Well, maybe you got something there. I think I can do it, too. I think you're going to get hurt trying. And right now. Hey. Are you stinking slob? I'll take you apart for that. I'm waiting. Oh, it's you. You never saw the day you could do it. <laughs> Look at him now, Carol. Colder than a frozen mackerel. All right. All right, so you beat him this time. I'll beat him any time. Yeah? Well, right now you better get some bandages and stuff for costing. He's all cut up. No, ain't that too bad. Okay, I'll go down to the drugstore and get something for him. When he snaps to, tell him to watch his step after this or he'll get more of the same. Chief in his office? Yes, he is telling you. Hi, Chief. Hello, Argon. I'm glad you came in. The bank just called again. Well, they get more of the moldy money? Yes, and it came from the cafe again. An iron worker brought it in. He said he also got it from the cafe as part of his chain. Mm. The place is closed today. I just came from there. They must be going to reopen right away because they got a sign on the window that they want a waitress. Well, when? Apply this afternoon, the sign said. I was figuring on going back myself to see if I could find out anything. I think I've got a better idea. Yes, Mr. Garrett. Would you come in here, please, Miss Miller? Right away. I get it. She's going to go to work as a waitress. If she'll do it. <laughs> I've never known of the time one down yet. I didn't bring my book because when Harrington's with you, I'm never called for dictation. <laughs> you were right. But I have another job in mind. You know anything about being a waitress? No, but I learned fast. Isn't that cafe? Yes, we've still got that moldy money coming from the place, and it's going to reopen in a day or so. And they want to hire a waitress. I can try. Good. But you've got to promise to be careful on this. I'm always careful. Make sure this time. One murder in that place is quiet enough. Pop Leonard, owner of a small cafe, had been murdered in the cellar of the place. The killers had taken a box of money the old man had hidden under the bricks of the cellar floor. But one of the bills had been dropped and left behind. On it, we found traces of mold caused by dampness. A few days later, a neighborhood bank informed us that other moldy bills were coming in. And we were able to learn they were given in change by the cafe. To get further evidence, my secretary, Miss Miller, was applying for a job as waitress. Who do I talk to about the job? You talk to me. Is the job still open? Sign's still in the window, ain't it? I'd like to have it. I have very good references. You do, huh? How soon could you go to work? Well, I just need time to go and get my uniform. I could start this afternoon. I think you'd be pretty good. You got class. I'll tell you something, sister. I'm going to make a real nice place out of this. I'm going to expand. Pretty soon we're going to take over the place next door. Well, that sounds interesting. Are the tips pretty good? Oh, with you, they ought to be great. Well, I've got my references right here if you'd like to look at them. Look, sister, when I see something I see, I go for it. If you want the job, you got it. I don't need to look at no references. Well, I do. Can't hire a waitress like that, Munger. Why not? If she don't work out, we fire her and get another one. And go through all this again? You'll look at this girl's references right now. Now, why don't you keep out of this? Why should I? I guess I own the place, don't I? I don't care what you own. I'm running it. Let me see your references, miss. Here they are. All right. Is there anything wrong with her? She just break out of jail or something? Yeah, 
I guess she's all right if you want to hire her. I got news for you. I already hired her. Good. When do you want me to come back? How about in the morning? I'll be here. What time? Uh, we open at 7. Get here a few minutes early. She can get here at 6.30. Sharp. We have other things to do besides just waiting on customers. 6.30, that's fine. Okay, mister, you can take that sign out of the window. I'll do that, sister. I'll do it right now. So the help wanted sign go out of the window. Well, that's because I am now the new waitress. Good work. When do you start? Tomorrow morning at 6.30. Who did you talk to? A man named Munger. He was easy, but a girl came out and made it a little rough. For a couple of minutes, I thought I might not get the job. Well, what did the girl look like? Very attractive. Dark hair, medium build? That's right. Must have been Carol Thorson, Chief. Yes. Well, what did the man look like, Miss Miller? Well, he's young, about 25. Did they seem friendly? No, they didn't seem friendly at all. The girl said she owned the place, but he claimed he was running it. Oh, so she said she owned it. We'll have to check into that. We'd better get out of here, Harrington, before one of them comes out and spots us with Miss Miller. Yeah. Coming, baby. I recognize your step. Did you, Captain? I uh, came over because I had a real great idea. Is that the only reason you came over? You know better than that. Here. I'm real glad you came. I really go for you. Know that? I want you to. How about him? Munger? The sooner we get rid of him, the better. I just wish I knew a way to do it, that's all. I know a way to do it. A real good way. I hate you as the inside's costing. How do you think I feel? You should have heard the way he threw his weight around in the cafe today. You should have... Hold it. Hiya, baby. You thought I'd come by it. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you why I'm here, Munger. I... Got a real good idea today, and I came by to talk to Carol. You never had a good idea in your life. How do you know? What's it about, Cusking? It's about the cafe. You ain't got nothing to do with the cafe. You want to listen, Carol? I'll listen, Cusking. We'll use it as a front for a bookie joint. Six months, that's all we need. You'll make more dough than you can make in five years serving food. That's out. Why is it out? I think it's a great idea. I don't want to spend my whole life working. I told you that. I don't care what you told me. It's out. If that cafe is run right, it can be a real nice business. And we won't be in trouble with the law. Well, if the law don't catch you, how can you get in trouble? The cafe is mine. I ought to be able to say how it's going to be run. Don't try to give me any trouble, baby. You'll only end up with cuts and bruises. You're throwing your weight around too much, Munger. You stay out of there. I'm in. I'm taking the kids apart. She says she wants to run the place her way, so that's it. If you don't like it, you can blow. Maybe you ought to check in at some hospital, Coste. Maybe I hit you a little too hard yesterday. You talk like your brains are scrambled. So you landed a couple of lucky punches. What does that prove, that I'm scared of you? Don't bet on it. Don't bet a quarter on it. Now get away from me before I turn loose on you again. I don't think you can do it again. Let's go outside where we won't break up the furniture. All right, let's go. This time we settle it once and for all. You're crazy, Costing. He's too much for you. Not the way I'm going to work it. <laughs> Come on. You'll enjoy this. You're not being smart. Somebody's going to call the cops and we'll all be in trouble. Munger's the only one who'll be in trouble. And don't worry, nobody's going to call the cops. We'll make a deal on this, Costain. The one that loses gets lost, agreed? That's the way I've been planning it all the time. Okay, pal. Here's where I fix you up. Hey, wh what are you going to do with that knife? Put it up against your back like this. Hey, now, wait. Get the car door open, Carol. Sure. All right, Munger. 
Around the other side, Carol, quick. Yeah. Help me. Get him over. He's, he's out cold. Yeah. Thought he could push me around and get away with it. Nobody does that. What are we going to do with him? We're going to take him somewhere and fix it so he never comes back. Then we'll go to the cafe and figure out our new plan for the place. From now on, it's just you and me. I'll get it, Chief. District Attorney's Office. Oh, Harrington, let me talk to Mr. Garrett, will you? Yep, he's right here. Miss Miller, Chief. Hello, Miss Miller. I'm calling from the cafe, Chief. Anyone there with you? No one. The day was supposed to be closed, but I have a key to open up, so I came in anyway. And I've been looking around. Pretty risky. But worthwhile. I found a cash box behind some canned goods that has about two or three thousand dollars in it. And the bills have that mold on them. Are you sure you're alone? I'm positive. Is that the only phone? There's another one back in the kitchen. All right. Do it quickly, Miss Miller. I will. Goodbye, Mr. Garrett. Where do you think you're going? Thirsty. Well, I ain't Goldilocks. Please get out of my way. And let you take the money out of here? I got other ideas for you, stool pigeon. I gather you heard the phone conversation. You gather right. Who was the guy at the other end? The district attorney. Oh, I'm flattered. Put down that cash box. I'm sorry, but I have to take it with me. Put it down. I... <laughs> now I'm going to show you what I do to stool pigeons when I get through with... Come here, you. Let me get hold of her. Do you see what she did to my eye? Never mind that. we got to move fast in this thing. we got to take that door and blow town. You're not going to let her go. Are you kidding? Get that cellar door open. All right, get down there. You... No. I want to do this, Cassie. Okay, here's the gun. You'll never get away with it. You'll be surprised what we'll get away with. She won't be around to know because she's going to get it oh. right. Somebody just said. Mr. Garrett, we're down here. Shut up. I'm killing her right now. Give me that gun. Kill her, kill her. Look, I shut up too. If that's the DA, this thing can be our ticket out of here. Well, how can it be the DA? She was just talking to him on the phone. Maybe you don't know it, but our office is only a few blocks away from here. Oh, she's lying, Cassie. And if you won't take care of her with that gun, I'll do it with one of these bricks. It went by. Let's get out of here, Custine. Now, those are just customers upstairs. Let's finish this job and get out of here. How do you know they're customers? Well, there's one way to find out. Yeah. Take the gun. I'm going up the steps. If anything happens, blast straight up at the doorway. What about you? I'll take care of myself. Get your hands up. Hey. Chief, you all right? I'm fine. All right. That was close. All right, Pop. Stay where you are. We've got the girl here. That isn't going to do you any good. It better do us some good. Or she'll never walk out of this place. This looks like a bad one, Chief. We're pigeons if we try to get down those steps. You think you got the edge, don't you? You think you can call a squad car and use tear gas to root us out? Well, I can think, too. And you're going to throw your guns down here and let us buy? Or we kill the girl right now? That's quite an argument you've got, mister. But I can pull a switch on you. Do you hear, Miss Miller? I can pull a switch on him. I hear a key. Go ahead and pull it. So loud. Oh, I quit. I quit. Let's hear you toss that gun away. Turn on the light, Hangin. All right, you two. Get your hands behind your heads. Are you okay, Miss Miller? Well, I'm a little jarred from dropping on those bricks, but <laughs> otherwise I feel fine. You reacted beautifully. Oh, I think so, too. 
Of course, all I was saving was my life. Oh, you just wait. I'll get you for this. I don't think you will, Miss Thorson. After your trial is over, I don't think you'll be able to get anyone. All right, Harrington. Let's take them out of here. No doubt you recall the facts of this case. The man we call Costain was tried and found guilty of murder in the first degree. Two counts. Carol is serving a long sentence for robbery and assault with intent to kill. And now this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.